Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship here at Bethlehem. We are glad you are here. Uh, this is slightly dreary, uh, but still joyful day. Uh, I am Pastor Jane Bertel, for those who don't know me. A uh, special welcome to those who are uh, with us on Facebook Live this morning. We are glad you are with us as well. Uh, for those who are here in the sanctuary, worship materials can be found out on the table in the narthex. Uh, there is a bulletin and a children's bulletin uh, out on the table. Uh, you may also feel free to use your device uh, and the electronic worship materials, which are posted on our Facebook page, were also sent out uh, through our email list on Friday. Uh, if you would like to receive those materials in your inbox or um, the EUs, which lists our ministry happenings here at Bethlehem Independent Community, um, I'll invite you to send your contact information to office at BethlehemConsturbridge.org. Again, that's office at BethlehemConsturbridge.org. Um, I would also like to invite you for parts of the liturgy to follow along in our Red ELW, we are in setting eight on page 184. Again, that's on setting eight on page 184. And for those who are with us online, uh, please be sure to have your bread and wine or grape juice ready uh, for our service of communion today. As we do every Sunday, we begin with your uh, prayer requests. Uh, what joys and concerns do we have to lift up this morning? No. Uh, two joys. Um, during Sophie's confirmation, our friend Bill asked for prayer requests for his sister's sister in law, who was just diagnosed with. Um, at the time, they thought they weren't able to do anything, but he just wanted me to share with you guys that after we prayed, the next day she came home and is from the hospital. Yeah. 
So prayers for Dottie and her husband, for Paul, and for all who were, have been impacted by Ian and the subsequent hurricane that just hit. Uh, it's a long road to recovery. And people have lost homes and property and have lost people, have lost family members. And so we, we continue to hold everyone who's affected by natural disasters in their prayer. Lois. Prayers for Nick, who's deployed to South Korea. Sir. Um, Dave, do we have anything on Facebook? We do. Um, so from Beth, uh, please continue to pray for Mike as he recovers from knee replacement surgery. Continued prayers for Mike, who had knee surgery, knee replacement surgery this week. We have a good morning from Donna in Rochester, Minnesota. Good so. morning from Donna. Uh, let's see, um, from Carol, uh, prayers please, uh, oops, sorry, just one, um, for healing for, uh, eye issues. Prayers for Carol for healing for eye issues. And then, uh, from Kathy, uh, Sheehan, prayers for the crew of the USS California, deployed to somewhere in the North Atlantic, our grandson Miguel is a sonar tech on the submarine. Prayers for the USS California deployed somewhere in the North Atlantic. And then um, from the uh, Stewart uh, family, um, they've got uh, the uh, respiratory uh, virus there, so uh, asking for healing for them. Yeah, prayers for the Stewarts, who are, his family is dealing with RSD. For everyone who's struggling with that, it seems to have exploded this year. Uh, so we, we pray uh, for them and all who are affected by that. And then the last one that I'm seeing here is, uh, again, from Kathy Sheehan, uh, prayers for our household where three of us are recovering from COVID. Prayers for the Sheehans who, where three, three of them are recovering from COVID. And for all who are still coming down with it, dealing with COVID and long-term COVID, and we pray for all of them as well. And then I have just uh, a joy uh, that we had a great flag football season in town, and it's good to be back, but it's also good for that to be done. So, hey! <laughs> uh, woo, we had 220 kids, 18 teams, uh, so yeah, it was uh, a lot of fun for the kids in town. We give thanks for flag football. We give thanks that it's over. We give thanks that you're back. I think that covers it. Anything else on Facebook, Dave? Not right now. All right. Since there's no one on Facebook from that, but praying continuing prayers for Mike and his brother from the Yeah, yeah. continuing prayers for Mike and his unless unless I his knee replacement recovery. Worth saying again. Oh, I, I missed it the first time. That's all right. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Double prayers for Mike. Double, Double prayers. prayers. Uh, any other prayer requests this morning? Uh, before we begin with confession and forgiveness, uh, we're going to be begin with a moment to recognize uh, the veterans in our community. Uh, so we'll take a moment and uh, go through the list of those who have served uh, as we remember uh, this past Veterans Day, which was Friday. Lord God, we give you thanks for those who have served and sacrificed for our country. We pray for Nick, for Boyd, for CJ, for Dave, for Jared, for Tony, for Tim, for John, for Sean, for Daniel, for Logan, for Alex, for Beth, for Steve, for Miguel, for Philip. For Ben, for Mark, for Tyler, for Matthew, for John, for Nicholas, for Mike, for Sherry, for Drew, for Pete, for Jamie, for Daniel, for Sean, for Jordan, for Jeffrey, for Andrew, for Peter. And we honor the memory of TJ and Rob. Is there anyone else who would like to lift up this morning? Lois. Uh, 
for Charlie. Lord God, we give you thanks for their service. We give you thanks for their sacrificing. We give you thanks for their capacity and gifts to uh, stand in front of some of the forces of the world uh, that seek to cause uh, trouble. In all of this, we pray in your name. Amen. We begin our service with our confession and forgiveness. I will invite you to stand as you are able and Please turn and face the Father.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Grace us with your mercy, 
that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live to do what is temporary without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. We continue this morning with our readings from Scripture. Our first reading is from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all the evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when you were with, with us, with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we work night and day, so that we may not burden any of you. This was not because we did not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not be. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please stand for the gospel. Gospel according to Luke, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, As for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be, and what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you do not be led astray, for many will come in my name and say, I am he. And the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first. But the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nations will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues. And there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will not put some of you, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair on your head will, be, will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. Please be seated.
Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved, it's no secret that we have spent, that we have spent a lot of time these past few years in the midst of disaster. It's a stretch of time for a while when I would think to myself, surely things cannot get any worse. And that's probably my fault because I didn't knock on wood afterwards. And then, of course, they did. A global pandemic, political upheaval, an insurrection at the Capitol, mass shootings too many to count, a war in Ukraine, nuclear tension between Russia and the rest of the world, ballistic missile tests on the Korean Peninsula, threats to democracy, hurricanes and natural disasters, this list could go on and on and on and on. Now, of course, this very time and place that we are living in has also been shaped and formed by a near apocalyptic event, the day that none of us, I'm sure, ever will forget, 9-11-2001 a day that changed the course of the world, damaged institutions, and brought yet again more war and bloodshed to a world that over the course of its history seems to be saturated by it. There's of course the ongoing disasters of food insecurity and homelessness and the opioid crisis, just to name a few of these things that sometimes get overlooked. And to be quite honest, it has, especially in the last few years, felt like there has been an apocalyptic spirit in the air. Oh, and let's not forget that NASA recently, in the course of this time period, figured out how to knock a potentially planet-killing asteroid off its trajectory without requiring the services of Bruce Willis and Ben Affleck. (laughs) I'm gonna knock on wood just in case. (laughs) I think it's certainly safe to say that we have seen our fair share of disasters over the course of the last few years, and this, of course, also encompasses some of the personal disasters we may have been experiencing in our own lives as well. Now, as we think and process and consider all of this in the context of this apocalyptic text, I think it's important to recognize that the Greek root of the word apocalypse means to uncover, to reveal, to lay bare, to disclose. I know you're shocked Pastor Dan's actually using Greek in his sermon. As we reflect on the disasters that we have been surrounded by over the past years, I think one of the questions that we are uh, invited to consider or perhaps are confronted with in the midst of all of this and all of these things that have surrounded us lately, I think all of that centers around what has been revealed in these moments of struggle and conflict. As we continue to live in this liminal space of what was and what is yet to be, which of course has been shaped largely by the pandemic, what has been exposed and brought to the front? We know the pandemic exposed the drastic inequality in this country. We know that the demons of racism and white supremacy have emerged from the shadows and into the mainstream in a very real way. And we have seen the consequence of war impact the global food chain, particularly with the war in Ukraine, worsening the hunger situation for those who are food insecure. We have seen flaws and limitations of our institutions exposed, both political and denominational. We have seen power corrupt and twist and threaten this democratic experiment. We have also seen people display an incredible amount of resilience and and adaptability in the face of a changed reality. We have seen gifts emerge as the way we were as church together was completely upended. We have discovered a new capacity to be community together and embrace a hybrid model of church the best that we could. The challenges of our church, not just our church, the church with a capital C, have also been revealed. The world has changed so drastically in such a short period of time and the impact of those changes 
is now being felt across denominations, leaving us with a sense of unease and uncertainty as we sort through what has been and what is yet to come. In the Gospel lesson for today, we find Jesus delivering some rather startling news to the disciples. We, at this point, jump to the end of the Gospel of Luke, and Jesus has already arrived in Jerusalem after uh, the Palm Sunday narrative, and is on the verge of being betrayed and arrested. Now the setting of our story is the temple in Jerusalem, a center for life in the city, of culture and religion, and that is where we find others, and perhaps the disciples, observing the magnificent improvements that King Herod has made to the temple, which has taken over and 80 years to complete. The temple was now adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, among other things. Then, in the midst of their observations, Jesus seemingly drops the hammer. He says, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. Well, that seems like a pretty gloomy statement to me. The temple, a center for religion, and in some ways cultural life, is going to be thrown down in such a way that not one stone is sitting upon the other. If there were any time for a yikes emoji, now would be it. I think as we consider this statement, I think we also need to reflect on what has happened in the temple previously. Earlier in the week, Jesus comes to the temple to teach, but in the process, recognizing some of the corrupt practices that are going on, particularly with the money changers, he overturns the money changers' tables rather dramatically while saying, my house will be a house of prayer, but you have made it a hideout for crooks. And then Jesus continued to teach daily in the temple. These dramatic words and scenes that surround this institution that was such an important and central part of people's lives Are startling. The desire of the priests and scribes to kill Jesus can be centered around this disruption as sort of the final moment that really seemingly sealed Christ's face and fate. Particularly after he tossed the tables in the temple in the temple. These words by themselves would be enough to get anyone to do a double take with their white mouths wide open and aghast. And hearing these words would surely be a shock to the symptom, particularly in Christ's foretelling of the temple's demise. To hear this, to hear that the center of religion and the center of the way of life would be gone, definitely has some shock value. And yet, there are times, I think, when to reflect on the institutions that we are a part of and what that might reveal, particularly if it leads to transformation and change, change and transformation that may be necessary, tables that perhaps may, may need to be flipped so that something new can emerge. As we begin to process what has been revealed to us as the body of Christ in the, waking, in the wake of seemingly endless disasters, I think one of the conclusions that we may arrive at is there are certainly some tables that need to be overturned in the systems and institutions that we cling to. It should be noted, however, and it is important to note this, that when tables are overturned, when temples are destroyed, it does not mean that either Judea Judaism or Christianity were destroyed. We rather, we recognize that the spirit of God endures, as Deborah Mumford shares in her commentary on Weekly Working Preachers. 
spirit of God transcends buildings and structures. Both religions continue to grow and evolve over the centuries in new geographical locations, nations, and among people of many ethnicities and races. People can take part that although Christianity seems to be declining in some denominations, through the spirit and power of God, it will continue to live and grow in new forms and in new places. Our task is to ask for discernment about what God wants us to do, and then follow the guidance of the Holy Spirit to get it done. As we continue to encounter a world where nations rise against nations and kingdoms rise against kingdoms, where we continue to wrestle with storms, natural and man-made, where inequality reigns, some reflection is certainly required. But more than that, we are reminded that our call is not to remain stagnant and still, but in the face of injustice that has been revealed over the last several years, we must respond whether that's throwing the tables of corruption and unjust wealth, or challenging entire systems that only serve to enhance the few over the many. The church as a whole, in addressing this word, also needs to look at itself and find the places we, we may just need to tear down. We are not immune. The events that took place in the Sierra Pacific Synod this past year has certainly revealed that, and probably we have come to this far too we too are susceptible to the power, pursuit of power, to white supremacy, and to the harm of neighbor. As Lutherans, we recognize that we are simultaneously both sinner and saint. In all of these things, the gospel lesson today also reminds us that despite the gloom and gloom this text seems to bring forth, we are never alone in this, and that even Amidst the false prophets and apocalyptic, apocalyptic disasters that we may face, even when we find ourselves persecuted and reviled, even and especially when friends and family turn on us, we are not alone. Jesus walks with us all along the way, and in the story that immediately follows the gospel lesson for today, we are reminded of the great gift that was left to the disciples and to us on that last night they gathered together. As they gathered around the table, Christ took the bread and the wine and blessed it, saying, this is my body, this is my blood, given for you in the remembrance of me. We are reminded that at all times, but especially in the midst of disaster, that we are a resurrection people, thanks be to God. Freed through the death and resurrection of Christ, we rejoice in that freedom, but then are reminded that we are called to respond to the disasters of the world, even, and perhaps especially, as we seriously discern the systems and institutions that we are a part of. Friends, this is our Easter vigil moment. They have time of uncertainty and anxiety over the way the world has been altered but one that's also filled with anticipatory hope, because we know God is always up to something, and that the Spirit of God is always working towards something new. The question for us, and all that has been revealed, is where the Spirit is leading us as a resurrection people, and what will emerge next from the empty tomb. Though we may not for certain know what is coming next, we can look forward in hope trusting that God continues to be at work in the world through us and the gifts that we bring to bear here in this place, especially in the midst of apocalypse. Perhaps the words of the prophet Isaiah can offer some grounding for us in this time and in this place. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Amen. Amen. We continue this morning with our hymn of the day, that streams of living justice, ELW number 710. Again, that's in your red hymnal number 710. Please stand as you are.
people of God, let us join together in confessing the faith, faith we share through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance to challenge the times. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy is great. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and new life. Help us to care for what you have made. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Spirit of life, who paints the skies in every hue, we praise you for morning and night, for dawn and dusk and for every moment in between. We praise you for the vibrant, loud, and serene colors of creation. We revel in ever-changing of the seasons. We thank you for the infinite and yet the undiscovered diversity of your creatures, of galaxies beyond our imagining. Teach us to feel awe and wonder. Teach us to see and celebrate the stunning beauty in all you have made. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. We especially pray for the crew of the USS California and Miguel. At sea. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in your tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. May the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick. Especially prayers, prayers for Mike healing from his knee replacement, and as I recall, prayers for his wife and patients. <coughs> prayers for eye surgery for Carol. Prayers for Jolene recovering from surgery. Prayers for Bill's sister. Prayers for Tony's back, Ginger's family. Prayers for the Oz, uh, the Stewart family, uh, recovering from RSV. Prayers for the Sheehan family, recovering from a bowel and colon. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for all those who are suffering from. COVID-19. Be present with those who continue to suffer long-term assistance. Comfort those who have lost loved ones. Empower and give courage to the medical professionals to provide the care at the risk of their own health. And finally, strengthen those who are working to distribute a vaccine so that we may see an end to this pandemic. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We 
also rejoiced in the end of a very successful flood football season. And we pray for all of those who have suffered losses in the recent Hurricane Nicole, Dottie and Paul's family in Florida, now living hard to find new housing, and all of those who have been devastated by this recent hurricane. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work with disagreement. Hear us, O oh God. Our mercy is great. Consoling God, invite all and all who grieve for loved ones to your God. Comfort us with the promise of the resurrection and new life with you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accept these prayers, gracious God and those who are only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share a sign of peace in whichever way we feel comfortable. For those online, please share a like, a love, a laugh, or a comment of peace with one another. Remembering God's overflowing new life among us, let us gather our tithes and offerings. There are a number of ways that you can give this morning. The first possibility is that you can visit our website, www.bethlehemsturbridge.org. By scrolling down to the bottom of the bottom of the home page, you'll find a link to our PayPal page where you can make your offering with your debit or credit card or your own PayPal account. You may also continue to mail your offering to the church. Simply address it to Bethlehem Lutheran Church, 345 Main Street, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, 01566. Again, that's Bethlehem Lutheran Church, 345 Main Street, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, 01566. And for those who are gathered here in the sanctuary this morning, if you so choose, you may leave your offering in the basket on the table in the narthex where you found the worship materials as you exit the sanctuary this morning. For those who are with us on Facebook now, is the time to have your bread and wine or grape juice ready as we prepare for the feast that is for all. Let us enter into a time of prayerful meditation as we make our offering to God. <laughs>
Blessed are you, maker of all things, for you have entrusted us with all that you have created. Now gather our gifts, nourish us with the sacrament, and send us to those who hunger and thirst for the sake of Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs and angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and hope. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread to the outcast and despised, and to ransom those in bondage to prejudice and sin night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his death and resurrection, we await the day when Jesus shall return to free all the earth from the bonds of slavery and death. Come, Lord Jesus, and let the church say, Amen. 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 Send your Holy Spirit our advocate. Fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of Freedom, and let the Church say, Amen. 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 Join our prayers and praise with your prophets and martyrs of every age, that, rejoicing in the hope of the resurrection, we might live in the freedom and hope of your Son, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Please be seated. Here at Bethlehem, the table is open for all to come and share in the meal that is for all. Please know that should you choose to partake in only the bread or the wine or the grape juice, we believe that Christ's presence is in both the elements, no matter whether they are consumed separately or together. Trusting that the crucified and risen Christ is fully present for you in, with, and under what elements. 
Those who are gathered here in the sanctuary today, communion will be served from the center of the floor. We'll invite you to come forward from the center aisle, and you will come forward and receive a wafer from me, and then you may choose to intake in either a chalice of wine or a chalice of grape, grape juice. For those who are in need of a gluten-free option, please make that known to me as you come forward. For those who would prefer a blessing over the meal, please come forward with your arms crossed over your shoulders. For those who are with us on Facebook today, you're invited to join us as the gathered assembly, both in person and online, communing one another with the words, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Come to the table, for all is now ready. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you.
have fed us with the bread of heaven and given us a foretaste of paradise. And look at us to be your body in the world and to serve those who are in need. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. What announcements do we have this morning for the good of the community? Terry. Church Council tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Church Council tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, here at the church. Uh, some reports have already gone out. Uh, so if you are on council, um, send your reports in. Thanks, Terry. Um, one other part of that, we um, are in the month of November, which means that we have about a month and a half um, before we elect a new council. And so please um, prayerfully consider if you're from saying yes to <laughs> I like the, the subtle look around. That was a nice touch. That was a nice touch. Yeah. Yeah. Someone else? Uh, Mel. Uh, we'll be getting ready for our advent this year. So it's going to be intergenerational. So all the talent of all ages are welcome to join. The pageant itself will be on the 18th of December. Uh, and we'll have a, a practice run on Saturday the 17th, four to five, and then we'll do some Easter stuff afterwards. So definitely low key in terms of parts and stuff, but it will be a lot of fun to have if you want to join. So actors of all ages and talents, we will take them all. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe even the audience has to do some stuff. We'll see. Right. <laughs> Prepare yourself. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Contact me. So he is drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a, were you volunteering for me? No, no. In case I'm not a volunteer, we may pull people up. Oh, oh okay. All right. Maybe you get like a lucky sticker and we can do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Every coffee hour from now until the pageant will be a sticker under a coffee cup. No, please just show up. Oh. We won't make you do anything. We don't want to. <laughs> Uh, Mel, thank you for organizing that. <laughs> Other announcements this morning? Melissa. Um, game night this Saturday. So come hang out and have fun. What's, the game? What's that? Multiple games. Oh. Many games. Also a pizza. And we'll also be doing some work to put together some packages for sink or uh, the closet. Yeah, that's the closet. Uh, that's out. Five, from 5 to 7 this Saturday the 19th here at the church. Uh, and you can check the news for that as well. Uh, just a reminder, we had our commitment Sunday last Sunday, um, but there are, we still have forms out on the table in the narthex. If you haven't had the opportunity uh, to, to get to that yet, they are there. Uh, those can be folded in half and placed in the basket out on the table in the narthex. Also, if you want to rather email it, you can send it to BethlehemPledge at gmail.com. Again, that's BethlehemPledge at gmail.com. Uh, a few notes about some upcoming services. We will have an ecumenical Thanksgiving service on Tuesday, the 22nd of November at 7 o'clock. That will be at Holy Trinity Episcopal Church in Southbridge. Uh, there will be an ecumenical choir. Uh, I know already a few people are singing. Um, right, boy? Yep. All right. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, and also, uh, after several years of not doing it, the Millennium Magic is going to be having a concert here uh, on the 10th of December at 5 o'clock with a free will offering that will go to benefit St. Luke's Guest House. Again, that's uh, Millennium Magic, which is uh, we've been in partnership with this choral group for several years of their finally getting back to being able to have a concert. So again, that's December 12th at 10 o'clock, or December December 10th at 5 o'clock. Sorry, I missed that. All right. <laughs> December 10th at 5 o'clock. Uh, other announcements this morning? Anything on Facebook? Uh, Carol put down Millennium Magic. So you got oh, it. great. Uh, also, please join us after the service for a time of coffee and refreshment in Quiet Hall is as you leave the sanctuary, uh, take a right, and uh, the hall is down the hall. Terry. Um, 
December 14th at 7 o'clock, uh, uh, hold an evening prayer, midweek service, um, which, which picks up all in the middle of uh, Advent, uh, still a time of reflection um, and music and work in the Word. So um, it's a fairly short service, 20 to 25 minutes, so if you're looking for a place of respite. Um, it's, it's a stunning service, yes, absolutely. Do please come out uh, December 14th at 7 o'clock. Other announcements? Not seeing any. Uh, we will continue. So, uh, Dave? Mike Wimberly said, don't forget to bring in food for the food share. Bring in food for food share, yes. Uh, we are always looking for donations to get sent down to Southbridge to the food, uh, food share food pantry. So if you're out and about, uh, at the grocery store, feel free to pick up uh, some extra items that you are able to help our neighbors who may be dealing with hunger insecurity. Thanks, Dave. Uh, we continue now in our service with a blessing. Please stand as you are able. The God of peace who creates all things and calls them good and makes us alive in Jesus and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Alberta Foundation, number 796 in your red ELW. Again, that's number 796 in the red ELW, or it can be found in your electronic worship materials.
Thanks be to God.